students welcome to online gdc classes today in our pharmaceutical analysis subject we are going to learn about complexometric titrations as the name indicates the complexes are going to be formed in the titrations by adding some complexing agents okay so what are the different types of the complexing agents and how these are going to helpful for performing the titrations so all these things we are going to learn in the today's session okay coming to the first slide these are also called as edta titrations edta so what is this ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid so all the structures and everything we are going to learn in the coming slides let us first focus on the introduction so what is edta titration okay so in here a complex consists of a metal ion so in this a complex consists of a metal ion surrounded by molecules or ions okay so a metal ion will be there and it is going to be surrounded by molecules or anions so this complex is formed by combination of metal ion with electron donating groups electron donating groups are these are also nuclear files so either you are going to uh, note that complexes are formed by by different metal ions which are having the, the complexes that means the uh, complicated structures are going to be formed by electron donating groups okay so these complexes are compounds formed from the combination of the metal ions with ligands so these are the actual called as ligands so what are ligands so actually these are the donating electron donating groups will be there and uh, based on the uh, lone pair of electrons they have categorized into different classifications we are going to learn about that one also and complex is formed by the combination of metal ion with the electron donating group or nucleophile that's what we have seen here so a metal ion is an electron deficient species so generally the complex is going to be formed when an electron donating groups are going to be attached to there that means what it is having metal ion is deficient okay it is deficient of the electron species while a ligand is an electron rich compound and thus electron donating species it will donate the electrons okay so ligands are going to donate the electron species and metal ions are capturing the electrons that's what the simple meaning okay so metal ion will thus accept the electrons from a ligand where a coordination bonds are formed okay different bonds are going to be there covalent bonds coordination bond like that so here by accepting the electrons from the ligand you are going to see some different coordination bonds so electron forming coordination bonds come solely from the ligands only in complexometric titrations okay so those are called as edta titrations when it comes from the edta molecule so what is this edta ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid okay so this is going to have uh, uh, different uh, complex formations when it is going to be used as a complexing agent in the complexometric titrations so let us first see one simple example so cuprous ions are going to be binded and cuprous is a metal here you can see so it is going to be binded by amino groups okay so whenever electrons are going to be donated then the metal ion is deficient of the electron species so it is going to form the complex here so the complex is going to look like this so this is actually a copper amine com complex okay so formation of the copper amine complex will be there like this so whatever it is uh, the complex is going to be formed it is going to give you the results for performing the analyte concentration that means you can perform the uh, estimation of the sum of the compounds okay so what are those and uh, those complexes are going to be highly stable in the nature so that's why this complexing agents are used so consider the addition of anhydrous copper perchlorate to the water okay so let us uh, assume addition of anhydrous copper perchlorate to the water so the salt dissolves readily according to this reaction copper perchlorate which is a solid so when in uh, water is added then it is going to be dissolved okay so 
here you are going to see the perchlorate ions and some cuprous ions okay cuprous hydroxide is going to be formed so a pair of electrons on the oxygen atom of each water molecule here you can see the lone pair of electrons they have uh, represented like this okay so the pair of electrons on the oxygen atom of each water molecule forms a coordinate covalent bond a bond in which both electrons originate from one atom okay so in this case the atom is nothing but oxygen from the oxygen the atoms uh, are go electrons are going to be donated okay so to this cuprous ions the electrons are donated so in this reaction what is happening cuprous that means cu plus 2 acts as a lewis acid and water is going to be acting as a lewis base okay because lewis has defined that electron donating and electron accepting groups right so such binding of the solvent molecules to a metal ion is called solvation thereby in the special case of the uh, some of the solvents like water we are going to call it as hydration okay the complex whatever it is going to be formed is called as aqua complex okay whatever this complex is going to be formed by addition of the cuper, uh, copper perchlorate to the water it is a aqua complex so like this the electrons are going to be donated by a atom so okay so which are going to be here you can see both electrons originate from the one atom only right so like this complexes are going to be formed thereby we can see different types of the titrations we can perform so coming to the basic definitions in this complex symmetric titrations let us see a ligand is called monodentate when it is called as monodentate if it donates a single pair of electrons like ammonia okay so if it donates a single pair of electrons that ligand is called as monodentate while a bidentate ligand means ethylene diamine okay nh2 ch2 ch2 h2n that means it donates two pairs of the electrons okay so when it donates a single pair of electrons it is called as monodentate when it donates two pair of electrons then bidentate okay so ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid chemically edta it is a hexadentate ligand that means six hexa it is going to donate six pair of electrons okay that's why it is a hexadentate ligand so the ligand can be as simple as ammonia which forms a complex with cuprous ions for example giving the uh, whatever the example we have seen in the previous slide okay cuprous uh, copper perchlorate so like this the ligand should be as simple as that it is readily giving the pair of electrons okay so when the ligand is a large organic molecule having two or more of the complexing groups like edta the ligand is called a chelating agent and the formed complex in this case is called a chelate so what are chelating agents the large organic molecules having two or more of the complexing groups that means it is going to give you more number of pair of electrons more than two okay by monodentate bidentate tridentate you can see the examples here so tridentate ligand so that is nothing but diethylene triamine okay so tridentate three you are going to see here and tetradentate ligand okay example triethylene tetraamine okay similarly hexadentate ligand so nothing but edta okay so all the six pair of electrons are going to be donated by this edta that's why it is called as chelating agent okay so if you see some of the examples of the complexes formed by different ligands here you can see uh, silver ions with cyanide it is going to form a silver cyano complex similarly cuprous with ammonia okay cnh3 four twice similarly iron with thiocyanate ammonium Uh, we have seen uh, in uh, some other titrations also okay so like this you are going to see different types of the complexes are formed with the ligands okay so similarly they have represented like this complex is going to be formed like like metal m means here they have represented like metal and 
it is going to form a frustrating uh, complexing agent then that the complexing agent is going to be uh, binding to that metal it is going to give some of the complex like this okay so this is general statement so the metal ion which is going to act as lewis acid that means what lewis acid is going to the electron acceptor it accepts the electrons and the ligand is used as a titrant or a complex forming agent okay which acts as lewis base here that means electron pair donor or a negatively charged group so ligands are giving the electrons that means they are uh, used as the titrants titrating solutions okay so they are going to act as lewis base okay whereas the metal ions acts as lewis acids okay so all these are the some of the examples of different ligand molecules now complexometric titrations are particularly useful for the determination of mixture of different metal ions in the solution so we can identify different metal ions in the solution state so an indicator capable of producing a definite color change is usually used all the titrometry analysis are going to be performed by both visible as well as instrumental methods okay so if you are going for the visible methods then you need to select a suitable indicator which is giving some a definite color change okay so whether it is a complexometry or acid based titration non aqueous titration whatever it is a suitable indicator should be selected to give the end point of the titration okay so a complexometry titration is a volumetric analysis in which a soluble undissociated here you can see a soluble undissociated stoichiometric complex is formed during the addition of the titrant to the sample solution okay because here it should be the complex whatever the, it is going to be formed by adding the ligand or a complexing agent so the fo formed complex should be a soluble and undissociated stoichiometric complex otherwise you are going to get if it is unstable or it is getting some other uh, complications then the results may get varied that's why a stable compound should be selected okay so all the compounds are not going to be used for the complexometric titrations so edta which is called as ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid is a complexometric indicator consisting of two amino groups and four carboxyl groups called as lewis bases so this edta sometimes it is also used like an indicator it is a complexometric indicator also okay and sometimes it is also used in other purposes also so what are the different uses we are coming to know and edta is a hexadentate ligand because of its competence to donate six pair of lone electrons okay lone pair of electrons are there six pairs due to the formation of the covalent bonds so even the presence of small metal ions would lead to the distinct change in the color in this even if any small amount of metal ion is there then it is going to form the uh, complex with that metal and it is going to give you the change in color so this leads to the formation of a weak complex so complexing agents actually are less soluble in water and most of them are free acids so whatever the complexing agents we are going to select that should be soli less soluble in water and most of them are free acids and what are the ultimate complex has been formed that should be a undissociated one okay and it should be soluble so before using uh, they are converted into sodium salts that are feasible in water because uh, complexing agents should be less soluble in water that's why they are going to be used as sodium salts okay uh, sometimes uh, calcium salts are also will be there so sometimes simple titration methods are all used to determine the simple metal ions present in the water so we know that water is containing some metal ions raw water tap water is going to have so but to determine the exact number of metal ions present in the sample complexometric titration is used so as we all know that complexometry is highly useful for determining the hardness of the water okay hardness means heavy metals uh, everything will be there in the water uh, not in distilled water but uh, normal uh, tap water is going to be there so uh, in order to determine the hardness of the water they are going to use this complexometric titration okay for that purpose they will use the 
EDTA only as the complexing agent. So, if you see the structure of this EDTA, okay, already we have uh, seen in the previous slide six pairs of the electrons, lone pair of electrons will be there, okay. So, it is a hexadentate, hexadentate ligand molecule, that's why it is called as chelating agent, okay. So, it is available in white crystalline powder and also if you see the most uh, complicated structure if you it is not complicated but it is a long big structure okay it is a uh, aliphatic only but for writing purpose they are going to use this small formula for writing the edta okay so it is going to have pk values at six levels if you see 0 is a negligible one. So, 1 1.5, 2, 2.66, 6.16, 10 10.24. So, EDTA is going to have 6 values of the PK. Okay. So, because it is going to be acting as the uh, titrating uh, complexes are going to be formed. Lewis acid is going to be formed. So, acid dissociation constant they have determined. So, these are the values. Okay. So, EDTA, it is already available in different formulations in the market. So, if you see the formulation here, we have represented that is EDTA 17%. They are using for the different purpose like in uh, uh, <coughs> solution state. Okay. So, in powder state also, they have they are going to use in cosmetics also. So, all the applications also we are going to learn in this presentation today. Yeah. So, if you see the EDTA, calcium disodium. So, already we have uh, told that it is going to be manufactured in the form of sodium salts, right? So, here EDTA calcium disodium they have prepared which is known as medication that is calcium disodium versatile. Calcium disodium versinate is given intravenously or intramuscularly IM or IV to treat heavy metal toxicity because Whenever the heavy metal toxicity has been occurred in humans or whatever it is in the animals, it is going to form the complex with the heavy metals. Specifically, acute and chronic lead poisoning. So, in such cases, they are going to use this EDTA calcium disodium. Okay. So, this is a medication. And uh, editate disodium. That means, uh, reversely also we can call it, it as disodium editate. It is a different medication which does not contain calcium. Here the above one contains the calcium also. Here only sodium. Okay. So disodium edited contain only sodium uh, salt. So it is called endrate. This is also called as endrate. And it is used to treat hypercalcemia. Okay. So it can also treat cardiac arrhythmias caused by drug digitalis. So we know digitalis purpurea. Okay. All the cardiac glycosides. Okay. So whenever this... Uh, uh, cardiac arrhythmias is caused by drug digitalis, a cardiac glycoside. So, in that also, you can use this EDTA, disodium editate. Okay. So, this EDTA actually it is approved by FDA for use as an additive in many processed foods. It promotes color retention in the canned foods. Okay. In the canned foods like white potatoes, clams, mushrooms, shrimps, and peak and pie filling. So, all this type of foods. That means all these are the canned foods. So, in these also, usage of the EDTA is allowed and it is approved by the FDA. So, EDTA acts as a preservative also. Okay. So, it is going to act as preservative in salad dressings and mayonnaise by bonding with the natural enzymes. So, responsible for the food spoilage. So, whatever the natural enzymes which causes the food spoilage, it is going to form a complex with that and James, okay, EDTA. So, that's why it is also uh, <coughs> can be used as preservative. So, thereby stabilizing the food product. So, EDTA also promotes flavor retention in the canned stores, sodas, pickled cabbage as well as pickled cucumbers, okay. So, it also promotes the flavor retention. It maintains that flavor. So, EDTA is used as an anticoagulant also. So, lot of uses for this EDTA because it just forms the complex only. It is not going to have any other side effects. So, it is used as an anticoagulant in blood banks by chelating calcium in the blood which prevents it from clotting. 
okay so we all know that for uh, especially in biological samples anticoagulants are used to, um, to in order to prevent the coagulation while taking the samples so k2 edta potassium edta salt will be there so in that cases also you can use this edta as an anticoagulant so in dentistry edta is used before the application of the dental adhesives okay so whenever any dental cavities uh, are going to be there then uh, before application of the those and dental adhesives it is edta is used so in root canal therapy also it is used and eye drops that contain edta remove the calcium deposits from the eye okay easily it can form the complex from the with the calcium and it removes that from the eye so edta actually it is popular additive to the soap also and it chelates Mag magnesium and calcium found in the hard water so whatever the heavy metals present in the hard water so it forms the chelates with those and making these substances unable to interfere with the cleansing action of the soap on the skin okay so it's also used in the mouthwashes cosmetics and other common topical preparations for use in the skin right so as an additive to the soap they are going to use and because edta is excreted by the kidney it is contraindicated in patients with active renal disease so those which are having who are having the renal problems and the kidney problems which uh, these are not suggested to use okay and this is the complex metal edta complex formed okay uh, and uh, whenever small metal will be there this edta is going to form a complex with that metal because it is a six hexadentate ligand okay so due to low solubility of the acid form of this edta in water its disodium dihydrate edta salt is highly preferred so as we all said that it is having edta is having the low solubility so that's why uh, in water it is having low solubility means they are going to prepare in the sodium salt so disodium editate we can call it as so in that form only we are going to use this as a complexing agent so edta has four carboxyl groups and two amine groups and it is a polydentate ligand as it donates six lone pair of electrons okay for the formation of coordinate covalent bond with the metal cations it forms the metal edta complex okay so uh, already i told you that it is simply they are going to represent like this h2 by 6 okay so whenever metal ions are present it is going to form complex and it is going to be represented like this that, that means six uh, pair of electrons it is going to donate that's why uh, they have represented n minus 4 like this okay so advantages of the edta as titrant so edta form the stable complex with various metal ions so the complexation occurs in a single step and hence the titration of the metal produces a sharp change in the metal ion concentration at the equivalence point okay so as we all know that the complex uh, uh, whenever it is formed we should get the sharp end point is the complex whatever it is formed by the edta and the titrating solution ions uh, it is going to be uh, give you the equivalence point as well as end point but very sharp change has to be observed so the metal edta complexes are all water soluble and hence all studies can be performed in aqueous media okay because uh, edta is going to be converted into disodium salt so all the titrations are going to perform in the water so edta which forms a one is to one complex so if you are going to see the stoichiometry then one is to one complex with all metal ions irrespective of all the charge on the metal ions okay so if you are taking some other different metals cuprous or whatever the nickel bismuth whatever it is uh, different metal atoms are present but it is going to form a one is to one complex so the stoichiometry is hence same for all the metal atoms okay so that's why they have represented like this this is a generalized equation for uh, while using this edta okay but even though it has lot of advantages lot of applications also but it has some of the limitations also so first one is the formation of insoluble hydroxides okay and second one lack of selectivity so many edta titrations are carried out under alkaline ph okay which may lead to the formation of the insoluble hydroxides <coughs> or basic salts that may compete with the complexation process okay because uh, we know that all the titrations are going to be performed in the water only aqueous solutions only and 
and most of the titrations are going to perform in the alkaline pH only. So at the basic pH it is going to form the insoluble hydroxides or some of the basic salts it is going to result. So it may compete, those salts may compete with the complexation process that is the formation of the insoluble hydroxides are going to happen. Now second limitation that is lack of selectivity. Since EDTA forms stable complexes with most of the metal ions, it lacks selectivity if it is used to estimate a single metal cation from a solution of mixture of metal cations. Okay, so, uh, let us say if the sample is containing calcium, magnesium, nickel, bismuth like that, mixture of metal ions are present, then the selectivity is going to be lost. So with which it is going to forming the complex, we are, don't know that. Okay, so the proper pH is important and it is related to the stability constant of the metal EDTA complex. Okay, Stability constant has to be determined and alkaline pH is required for the metals having the low stability constant. So whenever those metals having the low stability constant you need to um, maintain some alkaline pH and low alkaline to mild acidic pH is required for the metals having the high stability constants. So it all depends on the stability constant. Okay, so if the stability constant is more, then maintain the acidic pH, mild acidic pH. So if the stability constant is less, then go for the alkaline pH. So the dissociation reactions of acid from EDTA, that means which are going to pray from the which are pH dependent. Okay, so pH is also an important criteria for the proper functioning of the indicator substance. So pH control is also uh, one of the criteria for performing this complexometric titrations. Thus it is very important to maintain the pH during the EDTA titration. If pH changes then the complex formation may be different. Okay. So in order to overcome all these limitations we may feel that we need to use some other complexing agent that is rather than EDTA what else? What are the other alternatives of this EDTA to perform the complexometric titration? Okay. So these are some of the compounds. So these are actually water soluble diglycol amines. Okay. So which are used for the alternative to the EDTA. So here you can see the structures of these compounds TMDGA. That means NN tetramethyl diglycol amide. Okay. So this is one compound and tetraethyl diglycol amide and tetrapropyl diglycolamide and uh, TPDZA also and TODZA also okay so like means uh, octyl will be there so eight uh, groups will be there okay so these are all can be used as complexing agents in case of the titrations involving plutonium and AM3 so uh, plutonium we know all this uh, it is going to be exist in two three four states ionic states okay so this am3 what is this am3 means it is actually a uh, glass okay highly hard glass which is made up of carbon okay Chinese people okay so it is can be used as alternative to the diamond and uh, for this uh, analysis of this am3 okay we can use these type of the complexing agents as an alternative to the EDTA molecule. Okay. So in complexometric titration, the detection of the endpoint can be observed by two methods. So any type of the titrations, if you see, we can uh, measure the endpoint by visual method as well as by instrumental methods. Okay. So if you go for the visual methods means a proper indicator should be selected. So in most of the methods, it, it, um, this uh, indicator methods are mostly accurate and cost efficient. So instrumental methods are also uh, accurate only but somewhat expensive, right? So in this visual methods, we are going to see metallochromic or PM indicators. We are going to call these metallochromic indicators as PM indicators, okay? Second one, pH indicators. Third one, redox indicators, okay? So these type of the indicators are going to be used in the complexometric titrations. Second, instrumental method if you are going to use, then there is a possibility of the, whenever uh, there is a possibility of human error while performing this visual method. So, the inaccuracy in the visual methods uh, to overcome that, we can go for the instrumental method. Okay. So, some of the instrumental techniques which are used for the endpoint determination uh, like photometry, potentiometry and miscellaneous methods means like uh, amperometry. Okay. 
and uh, some so colorimetry is also going to be used as instrumental method for detection of the end point because in instrumental method we can exactly calculate the equivalence point which is uh, same as that of the end point but in visual method equivalence point is somewhat less than the end point okay so after you are getting the equivalence point only you will get the end point exact results uh, we can get by the instrumental methods highly accurate results so whenever the human errors are there then go for the instrumental methods so now coming to the types of the complexometric titrations so if you see here there are four types have been listed here direct titrations back titrations substitution or replacement titrations and indirect titrations okay so if you see the direct titration that means the solution containing the metal ion is titrated directly with the edta solution okay so it is like acid base titration only so this edta solution is added to the metal containing sample whatever the sample will be there which is given in the conical flask okay that may contain some metals so the burette contains the titrating solution and this edta is going to be added to that uh, conical flask in the burette uh, which is uh, edta is present in the burette and the conical flask is containing the metal containing sample so at the equivalence point what happens the concentration of the metal ion being determined decreases okay it all the metals present uh, in the conical flask okay that means in the analyte sample it is going to be forming the complex with the edta so which is determined by change in the color of the metal indicators so already we have listed out some metallic indicators are also there so metals such as copper zinc barium mercury aluminium lead chromium bismuth so all these are the different metals which can be identified by using the different complex that means direct not different here it is a direct complexometric titration so all these metals can be determined by direct complexometric okay so now coming to the back titration so many metals cannot be titrated directly right some of the metals uh, are going to be uh, reacting very slowly like uh, some various reasons will be there like a color not being distinguishable and a lack of uh, suitable indicator will be there and a slow reaction is going to take place between the metal and the edta complex so there will be so many reasons for this so in such cases what happen an excess of the standard edta is added and the resulting solution is buffered to the desired ph then the excess edta is back titrated with the standard metal ion so here magnesium okay so the excess edta is going to be titrated with the magnesium containing solution so those magnesiums are going to form a complex with the edta okay this is one type of the back titration now third type that is substitution or replacement titration this type of titration is used for the metal ions that do not react with a metal ion they are going to not react with the metal ion generally so then what happen uh, which form the uh, which are actually more stable com com compounds will be there okay so like uh, magnesium and calcium so for this uh, determination of the metal ions we are going to use a replacement titrations because uh, these uh, ions are going to be replaced by other ions okay so in such case a solution containing the magnesium edta complex is added and the metal ion displaces the magnesium from the magnesium edta complex okay so titration of the calcium in the direct titration of the calcium ions solo chrome black t gives a poor end point if magnesium is present it is displaced from its edta complex by the calcium so these are the displacement titrations or replacement titrations how we can perform by adding the uh, same complexes okay next indirect titrations when combined with metal cations some anions generate a precipitate whenever a metal cation is present some anions generate the precipitate so with edta these anions do not interact so indirect titrations with edta can be used to analyze them okay so whenever some precipitates are formed then these anions are not going to be interact with the edta so that advantage we are going to take it and we can perform the indirect titration so these are all the four types of the titrations we can perform for different uh, metal ions now dissociation of the complexes how it is going to happen okay so a given complex behaves 
as a weak electrolyte and dissociates to a small degree. So whenever a complex behaves as a weak electrolyte, then it dissociates into a small degree. So the dissociation is going to be very, very less. Okay. So the equilibrium constant for the dissociation of the complex is simply the inverse of its formation constant. Okay. So already I told you that it is uh, formation constant should be important. So the dissociation of a complex is simply the inverse of its formation constant. So here formation constant we are going to represent like K form. Okay. So inverse of the formation constant that is nothing but the here we are going to represent that one as K instability. Okay. That means here instability constant is represented as K INS. Formation is K form. Okay. So here uh, let us uh, see in one example the complex ion that is silver with ammonium. Okay. Dissociates according to the equilibrium reaction like this. So silver amine complex if it is there then it is going to be dissociated into silver ions as well as amine. Okay. So ammonia is going to be formed. Then how we are going to uh, calculate this uh, formation constant it is K form equal to AG that means uh, we know that all the product ion consist uh, like uh, Henderson Hasselbalch equation all these things we have learned okay so in the titrometry similarly here the formation constant is also going to be determined like this so if you reverse this equation you are going to get this instability constant okay that means uh, formation constant is inversely proportional that means K in uh, INS equal to 1 by K form. Okay. That means this is the reverse one. So reactants and products. The reversal of this will give you the instability constant value. Okay. So in actual practice what happens? The dissociation of a complex ion. Just like the ionization of a polyprotic acid occurs in steps as shown here. So if you see the complex here AG and H3 twice. Then AG and H3 is going to be formed. Ammonia is going to be formed. Then we are going to write the formation constant like this. Okay. So AG and H3 into ammonia divided by products divided by reactants. Okay. So similarly this AG and H3 plus again it will dissociate into silver plus ammonia. Two times. So then K2 equal to again products by reactants okay so the overall instability constant we are going to calculate that is k ins equal to k1 into k2 okay so like this we are going to calculate the formation constant as well as the instability constant because sometimes weak electrolytes so uh, some complexes are going to be acting as a weak electrolyte and the degree of dissociation is going to be very very less so in these cases we need to know about the concept of the formation constant as well as instability constant okay now let us have an idea on metal ion indicators metallochromic indicators pm indicators i told you that so what are these metal ion indicators to ensure that color change happens as close to the equivalence point as feasible, the indicators must be extremely sensitive to the metal ions, right? So the indicator should be sensitive to the metal ions, then only you can easily identify the color change. So the color reaction should be specific or at least selective. The color reaction should be selective with which metal ion it is going to react. So before the end point, when nearly all the metal ion has complexed with the EDTA, the color response must be such that the solution is intensely colored. So before the end point, you should ensure that all the metal ions have been complexed with the EDTA and the color response is should be in such a way that it is intensely colored. That means the color is quite stable also. And the metal indicator complex must possess sufficient stability but the metal indicator complex must be uh, Actually, it should have the sufficient stability, but generally it is less stable than the metal EDTA complex. Okay. Whatever the metal EDTA complex is there, uh, that metal indicator complex, it should be sufficiently stable. But in order to see the proper endpoint, it should be stable, but it is generally in practical, it is less stable than this metal EDTA complex. So, to get the sharp endpoint, EDTA removes the metal ions from the metal indicator complex. Okay. 
So the change in this equilibrium from the metal indicator complex to the metal EDTA complex should be sharp and rapid. Whenever the EDTA is going to form a complex with the metal ions, so at the end point, the indicator is also going to form the complex with the metal. Okay, so the metal indicator complex should be quite stable, but comparatively that complex is less stable than this metal EDTA complex. So EDTA should have the ability to remove the metal ions in order to accumulate the indicator metal complex. Okay, so uh, finally the metal indicator complex should be giving the proper results and the sharp endpoint we can obtain. Okay. So it should be simple to see the color contrast between the metal indicator complex and the free indicator. So metal of these PM indicators or metallic chrome indicators should behave in such a way that and all these criteria must be fulfilled within the pH range at which the titration is performed. So pH is also one of the very very important factor in complexometry analysis. So if you are not maintaining proper pH means you cannot identify the proper metal ion complex there. So some examples of this metal ion indicators are pattern and readers indicator. It is can be used for the 12 to 14 pH range and it is used for the calcium estimation and murexide. It can be used in the basic range that is 10 to 11 and it can be used for the estimation of the metals like nickel, cobalt, calcium, copper, cuprous okay? and solochrome black. 10 pH at the range of 10 pH and it can be used for magnesium, manganese, zinc and cadmium etc. And xylenol orange, it can be used for the 2 pH ranges that is 1 to 2 and 4 to 6. So 2 ranges you can use and here in 2 ranges means here uh, high, 4 to 6 means you can estimate calcium, palladium and nickel and thereby at the low level of the, uh, that means high acidic pH if you are going to use this xylenol orange then you can estimate uh, cobalt, zinc and bismuth and one more indicator that is methyl thymol blue. It can be used in the strongly acidic solutions, high strong strength of the solutions and in that you can estimate thorium, zirconium, okay, some of the other uh, elements, zinc, cobalt, okay, HF, this one is also there. So all these elements can be estimated by using the metal ion indicators, nothing but PM indicators, okay. So these are some of the structures and pKa values and the color of the free indicator. That means with, uh, before uh, forming the complex, how it be, uh, color is giving and after forming the metal ion complex, how the indicator is changing its color, okay. So calmagite, so this is a, one of the PM indicator. It is going to give you the uh, wine red color after formation of the metal complex and it can be used in the basic pH only. So pKa is 8.1 and 12.4. Like this erichrome black tea. So this is a chemical structure you can see here and murexide, xylenol orange and pyrocatechol violet. Okay. So all these are the different PM indicators which can be used in different pH ranges and these are the different color changes we are going to observe at the end point. So if you see the titration curve while performing this EDTA titration. So you can see if the sharp endpoint like in acid based titrations how we have seen. Okay. So sharp endpoint is going to be observed and at the half level you are going to see the endpoint here. Okay. So similarly uh, the at the half of the curve you are going to take this point. Okay. As the endpoint. So uh, this is a titration curve example we have taken while they have estimated calcium. Okay, So calcium is going to be estimated by using the uh, sodium EDTA. 0.1 molar strength they have used and at pH 7 and at pH 10 they have tried it and how the titration curve has been obtained. Okay, They have represented like this. So volume of the EDTA they are going to take in on the x-axis and what is the potential we are going to get this year or a pH sometimes how it is going to change. Okay. So, uh, it is going to be represented like this. So, if it is in visual method, we are going to see the uh, different uh, volume of the titrant, how it is consumed and how we are going to see the uh, end point. So, EDTA versus metal ion titration. So, it is, it is a simple equation that is PM equal to minus log of MN plus. Okay. So, where MN plus signifies the metal ion whose concentration is required which is plotted again as the volume of the EDTA. 
okay so that means the metal ion which is required which is present in our analyte molecule right the concentration is required for us and again is the volume of the edta solution a point of influxation occurs at the equivalence point okay so whenever the equivalence point is reaching then an influxation we are going to see in the titration curve okay so the general shape of the titration curve obtained following the titration of a simple uh, let us example 100 ml of a 0.1 moles per liter solution of the calcium ions if you are going to take with a, a sodium editate solution at separate ph conditions they have mentioned here okay this is one of the example of the titration curve for the calcium analysis so we have seen how we are going to perform the uh, how we have performed all the edta titrations with the different types so to increase because it is having some of the limitations also in order to increase the selectivity of the edta how we can improve the method okay so in order to increase the edta selectivity how we can perform the different uh, techniques first one that is chemical separation and second one ph control third one masking agents and fourth one demasking agents okay and fifth one that is kinetic masking kinetic masking means it is a simple thing uh, like a reaction rate it depends on the reaction rate so for this uh, we have given one example here that is fe plus 3 okay ferric can be easily estimated in presence of cr plus 3 chromate ions as the latter reacts slowly to form the complex here if your sample is containing both iron as well as chromate ions then the kinetic masking how they are going to do means it is going to react the edta is going to react with chromate very slowly okay so that is actually called as a um, kinetic masking so the rate of reaction is going to be very slow here so thereby immediately whatever the uh, end point we are getting that is due to the fe plus 3 only so based on the rate of reactions also we are going to improve the method selectivity with the edta okay so let us see the chemical separation and ph control how we can perform this so by separating the species from the other components from the sample solution that means separating of the species has to be done so separated species is then dissolved in suitable solvent and then titrated again as the edta using suitable indicator so like that uh, if it is going to form the precipitate like silver ions we have seen okay so if it is going to form some precipitate with that then separate that and remaining uh, take that filtered solution and titrate with the uh, so if the precipitate you need to estimate the compound means dissolve in the suitable solvent and titrate with the edta using suitable indicator okay vice versa uh, what is the required analyte present in your sample okay so if you for this examples calcium magnesium nickel and cuprous so all these metals you can estimate by chemical separation methods okay so uh, in this calcium can be uh, chemically separated as calcium oxalate and nickel it is going to be separated as nickel bis dimethyl glyoximate we can convert this like this and we can separate that okay and magnesium ammonium phosphate and cuprous thiocyanate okay so by adding some ed uh, additives we can make them separate okay so by adjusting now this is about the example for the chemical separation now filter uh, ph control how we can control the ph so by adjusting the ph of the sample solution containing several metal ions so already we have discussed that ph is very very important and different metal ions are indicators are used for uh, different purposes at uh, and all those are having the different pk values also so ph is very very important while performing the complexometry for this one example that is calcium can be determined in presence of magnesium in a mixture if you are going to get the both calcium as well as magnesium then you can first of all calcium can be determined in presence of that in strongly alkaline solution that means we are going to maintain the ph less than 10 if you maintain ph less than 10 means you can only determine the calcium even though it contains the magnesium ions okay and similarly bismuth and fe plus 3 in strong acidic ph that means if you maintain the ph to 2 if you use the uh, solution ph2 the at the strongest level that is at the ph2 then you can also estimate these type of the ions okay so this uh, uh, these are some of the examples of how we can increase the selectivity of the edta now let us see what are the masking agents and demasking agents masking agents or demasking agents whatever uh, the terminology it is why we are going to add this masking or demasking means to selectively prevent 
are to remove interference from the certain ions okay so to selectively prevent or remove interference from certain ions that may affect the accuracy of the titration results so in order to get a highly accurate results only we are going to use this so what are masking agents masking agents form the stable complexes with interfering ions preventing their reaction with the titrant so mask it will mask with the um, other substances so that it will prevent their reaction with the titrating solution okay so demasking agent means on the other hand it dissociate or remove the masking agent that means masking means it covers up demasking means it removes up that means one is uh, an advantage and um, sometimes uh, one while performing one reaction some disadvantages may occur then if you are going to add demasking agents that disadvantage can be overcome okay so demasking agents you are going to dissociate or remove the masking agents allowing the interfering ions to be titrated okay so that is vice versa so whenever this uh, masking or demasking agents are used they are going to be formed by two methods that is one is by precipitation one is by oxidation state complexes are going to be formed so while forming the precipitate means during the titration of hard water an example co precipitation of the calcium and magnesium it can be avoided if magnesium ions are precipitated as hydroxides at ph 12 and calcium alone can be detected in the initial reaction okay so what we are going to do here we are going to make it in the precipitate form so by adding some magnesium ions uh, uh, sorry during the calcium and magnesium okay so the co precipitations can be avoided by maintaining the high ph right so only the required analyte is only going to be precipitated and oxidation state complexes means the transition metal ions exist in variable oxidation states so the stability constant for the one oxidation state may differ from other oxidation state so as in case of uh, for this one example that is iron fe3 it forms stable complex with edta then fe2 okay so ferrous and ferric it is going to be different right so the oxidation state right so this ferric is going to be forms a stable complex with the edta than the fe2 right so we are going to make it into the another oxidation state so that complex is going to be very useful and it can be easily analyzed so common masking agents include edta also sometimes it is going to act as the um, masking agent and it salts also they are going to uh, form the complexes okay so which are used to mask calcium magnesium and other metal ions and other examples of the masking agents are citric acid tartaric acid and oxalic acid like what we have seen calcium oxalate is going to form okay so like that it is going to give you uh, some masking mixture for this and uh, examples of the demasking agents are sodium cyanide <coughs> which is used to demask the copper from edta complex and potassium iodide which is used to demask mercury from the edta complex okay so in order to demask the mercury we are going to add the potassium iodide then it will release a mercury so finally these are about the key points of the complexometric titrations and we can perform different types of the uh, complexometric titrations direct titration indirect titration okay replacement titrations like this so whatever it is you are going to use finally edta is going to be used as a titrating substance and standardization of the edta is also going to be done so afterwards you can perform um, for estimation of the all the metal ions okay so calcium magnesium nickel bismuth whatever the those metal ions are present in your sample you can perform as regular titrometer like using different methodologies so now finally uh, let us uh, do one exercise that is titration of 100 ml of water sample at ph 13 in presence of a calcium specific indicator such as erichrom black tea they have used erichrom black tea as a indicator okay so at the ph range of 13 they have used which has taken consumed 14 ml of the 0.02 molar edta solution okay so calculate the hardness 
of the water sample as calcium carbonate in mg per liter what they have asked to calculate the hardness of the water sample as calcium carbonate in mg per liter okay so let us see the solution for this problem so here we need to know the important information that is molecular weight for calcium carbonate is 100 grams okay and the stoichiometry for the reaction between calcium and edta at by ph 13 they have mentioned that at ph 13 and uh, so at ph 13 we can write the equation calcium with edta it is going to form the complex calcium edta complex okay so both magnesium and calcium contribute to water hardness we know that both metal ions have the same stoichiometry with the edta hence the titration includes the sum of magnesium and calcium ions in the water sample right so each one is to one it is going to form so how much amount they have taken uh, edta consumption volume is 14 ml and what is the molarity here 0 0.02 molar edta so we are going to calculate 14 ml and divided by 1000 ml into 0 0.02 okay so it is going to give you the number of moles of edta so it is consumed 14 ml okay so 1000 ml per liter we have taken and 0 0.02 molar okay so this is molarity is there so then we are going to get the moles of the edta right so from this one is to one stoichiometry the number of calcium ions present in the 100 ml of the water sample that means equivalent to the combined calcium and magnesium ions responsible for the water hardness should be equal to the number of moles of the type trend just have a look on this statement from the 1 is to 1 stoichiometry because here you can see the reaction 1 is to 1 okay so from this 1 is to 1 the number of calcium ions present in the 100 ml of the water sample yeah they have in the problem it's a titration of 100 ml of the water sample okay so equivalent to the combined both calcium and magnesium are present there so it should be equal to the number of moles of the titrant that means edta volume it is going to give you the one is to one ratio right so number of moles of calcium ions present in the 100 ml water sample equal to 2.8 into 10 to the power of minus 4 moles and 2.8 into 10 to the power of minus moles of the calcium is equivalent to how much amount of the calcium how we are going to calculate 2.8 in 10 to the power of minus 4 into 100 a gram per mole of calcium carbonate because it is a molecular weight okay number of moles into molecular weight so it is going to give you the amount of calcium present okay so it is uh, comes under grams we are going to convert this into the mg because what they have asked finally mg per liter so what we got that is 28 mg of the calcium so the hardness of water here is 28 mg present in the 100 ml water 28 mg of the calcium carbonate is present in 100 ml of water how we are going to get that is 28 mg divided by 100 and divided by 1000 ml per liter right that means for 100 ml we need to calculate and here um, 28 mg of the calcium number of moles we have converted right so that's why you need to take 100 by 1000 again right thereby you are going to get the 280 mg per liter because it is uh, what we got 28 mg that is 100 ml only okay so per liter means 100 by 1000 we have to take okay so thereby you are going to get the 280 mg per liter hardness so this is how we are going to calculate the hardness of the calcium in terms of the calcium carbonate so similarly if they are going to ask you the magnesium okay or some other any of the element present in that okay so here it is uh, termed as hardness so similarly uh, how the complex is going to form so it is easily you can remember that the edta whenever it is used as a titrating substance it is going to form the one is to one stoichiometry ratio so if you find the number of moles of this edta you can easily measure the um, information related to the other elements also okay what are the different metal ions present in that so you have, should have the basic knowledge on this uh, what type of different uh, metals are present so even though they have explained uh, in the problem or not you need to uh, calculate based on the information given okay so this is all about complexometric titrations 
so the key points how the metallic indicators are going to be used and how we can uh, use edta as a good complexing agent and what are the different alternatives for the edtas so thank you students for listening